explain six factors that may lead people away from the worship of God today. So these are factors that may lead people to away from uh, worshiping of God. And we say, talked about social insecurities, which may make people conclude that God has deserted them. But we have permissiveness, which may lead to loss of religious values. Urbanization may lead people to lose their religion, religious and moral values. Freedom of worship, which may lead to the misinterpretation of the scripture. We have pornographic films and literature which may divert people's attention. And we said when you talk about the factors, you explain just the way they are told here. The example is pornographic films and literature which may divert people, which divert people, no, to which may, which divert people's attention. We have science and technology makes people to place their faith in it instead of God. Poverty dehumanizes some people and directs them to desperation. We have formal education may lead people to arrogance, making some people believe that they know answers to all questions. And then we have bad church leaders. Question uh, 5a, state six promises that Israelites made when they renewed their covenant with God during the time of Nehemiah. So the promises that the Israelites made, number one, they were to live according to God's law. Or you can just say they were to obey all his commandments. They would not intermarry with the foreigners living in their land. They promised not to farm every seventh year. That is the same point as uh, they were to cancel all their debts every seventh year. They would make an annual contribution towards the temple expenses. That is, they made the promise that they, they would not de neglect the house of God. They were to provide wood for burnt sacri sacrifices. They were to offer the first fruits of their harvest. Or rather, you can just say they were to dedicate, to dedicate their firstborn sons. They would pay their tithes in accordance with the law. And then the last promise that the Israelites made when they were renewed their covenant during the time of the Hemiah is that they will not do business on Sabbath day. Question 5b, identify the final reforms by Nehemiah to restore the worship of God in Judah. So what are the final reforms by Nehemiah in restoring the worship? Some of two points that we used previously were to be used here. So number one, the final reforms were to cleansing the temple. That is, they were to they threw out the house, the household of Tobiah away from the chamber. That is the cleansing of the temple. Or you can just call it cleansing of the chambers in the temple. There was also uh, another point that many people, many students wrote is that uh, reinstating of the Levites and other temple workers. So you can just say resetting of the Levites. He also, that is Nehemiah, also ordered the closure of Jerusalem for the Sabbath observance. That means that if they, 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 they close Jerusalem on that Sabbath observance, people could not do what? Business. So he ordered the closure of Jerusalem for the Sabbath observance. He also separated the Jews from the foreigners. He purified the priesthood. That means that um, anyone who would be considered as a priest should be come from the house of who? The Levi. So he also returning the vessels of the house of God. And also appointing treasurers of the storehouses. That is the same point. So you see the return of the vessels of the house of God. At the same time, appointing treasurers over the storehouses. These storehouses belong to the what? To the temple. 
stopping the buying and selling of wares on the Sabbath day. I think this is the same as the what? Ensuring that no business was done on <coughs> the Sabbath day. That is stopping the buying and selling of wares on the Sabbath day. And he also ordered an end to all mixed marriages. That is, he ordered an end to marriage with what? Foreigners. That's what we are calling mixed marriages. Question 5C. Uh, state six lessons leaders can learn from Nehemiah. Seven marks. Leaders should be obedient. They should be prayerful. And in future, we know, it's not stating if you're told to explain, you make sure you know how to explain the point. It's good when you're doing your revision, you explain about how prayerful you were so that you can get any question you get on that, you're able to get it correctly. They should be role models. They should have courage. They should have patience. They should be compassionate. They should be honest. They should be patriotic. And lastly, reformist. Question 6a, and this is from the last chapters in the Pomonok. Explain why sacrifices were offered in the traditional African communities. Five marks. Why were sacrifices offered as a thanksgiving for blessing of rainfall, or if you are blessed with harvest, a good harvest, children, and health? So, you see, as a thanksgiving for what? You must say for what? Because you are. Yeah, so you have fully to, to write a statement. So as a thanksgiving for blessings like rainfall, children, harvest, and health. Also, sacrifices were offered to beg for God's forgiveness and mercy. To beg for God's forgiveness and mercy. Uh, as a petition for God's intervention during a crisis. As a petition for God's intervention during a crisis. And here we are talking, you give examples of crises like drought, epidemics, and famine. People also offered sacrifices to invite God to participate as a witness in a communal activity. And these communal activities that you are inviting God to, to participate in is like, for example, a covenant. Uh, when you're making covenant, or if there was an uh, interclan dispute and you wanted to settle it, you would invite God to participate as a witness in the communal activity. Also, to acknowledge God as a source of life, for example, during the rites of passage. So, here yes, sacrifices were also offered. Also, in the African traditional society, to ask for God's blessings and protection. For example, if you're settling in a new place, because you know some of the most uh, some of the traditional African communities are what or pastoralists. So if they were settling in a new place, they would ask for God's blessings and protection to worship God and maintain good relationship with Him. That is why they offered sacrifices. Question six B. List seven duties of diviners in traditional African communities. Duties of diviners. They predicted future events. They warned people against calamities. They pre-intercede for the community, or you can say they pre-intercede for individual during calamities. So they talk to God on behalf of the community 
on the above and individual if there was a calamity. So that's why we are saying they pre interceded for the community during calamities or for an individual during calamities. We can just say to and yeah to pre intercede. They also healed the sick. They interpreted uh, messages from the spiritual world. <clears throat> they acted as judges in the society. They mediated between God, spirits, and the people. So they mediated between God and the people, or spirits and the people. They comforted the sick. Diviners also counseled people with problems. And they used various objects to reveal secrets in the society, or they used various objects to, exp to expose the wrongdoers. Question uh, 6 C. Lists eight moral values promoted during funeral ceremonies in traditional African communities. So, what moral values that were promoted during a funeral? What morals were people showing? There is cooperation. So people come together. There is cooperation. There is also sense of responsibility. Respect. Loyalty, honesty, courage or bravery, love, hope, thankfulness, self-control, and generosity. That is the end of... Uh